a fan of How I Met Your Mother before you signed on for this show, but you were a little skeptical about joining the spinoff. What ultimately made you say yes? Well, it was the team. Um, you know, in the beginning, I was like, wow, this is something uh, quite large to take on, like, uh, you know, with such a following and what a great show that was. So um, I was skeptical in the beginning. But then as I talked to and found out about who's making up the team of this, I realized that there's a perfect balance of like um, uh, the culture of the past of the show, the makers of the show and uh, a fresh new take on the whole thing. So um, I realized, yeah, the team is good. The team is capable of doing this. And so far they've been great. So it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for this next question. You know, one of the benefits of television as a medium is the opportunity to live with a character for an extended period of time. As the creators and writers get to know each of the actors, they're able to incorporate elements of them into their characters. How has that relationship with Isaac and Elizabeth grown from season one into season two? And what was that collaboration been like? I think the biggest um, <clears throat> uh, evolution of the whole thing has been the ease with which we understand each other and uh, the ease with which they have begun to write like uh, the stories that they are able to tell because they have a better understanding of how we are and who we are. And more important than that, like what we tend to be better at and how mm. we are looking at this uh, individually and as a group, as the cast. Um, I think that's been the biggest change and it's been fantastic because, you know, to a degree you're, you're living with these characters, you're learning them as the audience does. So that's yeah. been fun because it's constantly, you know, exploration of the characters and you constantly see them do things which better help you understand um, who they are and how they are. So it's 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 an adventure. It's fun. You've also said in previous interviews that the writers are constantly surprising you. What's been the most surprising revelation about Sid across the two seasons? Um, I think, well, one thing is um, it's not as much as a surprise as it is a reformation that this dude is immensely loyal you know and he chooses that over things uh, that are far easier so for me it's not as much a surprise as a constant reminder that Sid is this you know immensely loyal dude and um really lives by his heart so yeah I think that's quite great so many hilarious one-liners throughout the two seasons how much of that is scripted versus improvised and how much space do you all have to improvise what feels most authentic to each of your characters well, in the process with which we do this, um, you know, we have a nice way to like kind of balance it out, which is on the, the first two days when you rehearse, when you do it in front of the uh, the writers and everybody, uh, you get a good, uh, you can get like good attempts in, you know, you can imp improvise, but you're trying to like, almost like uh, pitch it as an idea. So you move through things, you give your ideas. And at the end of the day, they choose. And then on the day, you you know try a couple of new things if you want to. And if you've created options, you use that. So it's kind of great that we have these two days before we actually shoot to like test things out to see how it goes. Because mm. when you're shooting, it's super fast and we need to get yeah. what we need. Um, so having those two days is a lot of fun because you can come up with your ideas. They can come up with new ideas. You know, it's a it's a it's a good place to test things out. It's it's fantastic. And then because of the pandemic, you did table reads via Zoom. Was there a moment on set when you realized you had the chemistry needed to, to bring this friend group to life? Um, you know, I'm sure there were moments where we kind of realized, oh, this is going to work. Like from the day from the day we all um, sat at the table read, um, you know, we were all like kind of, you know, somewhere between in our own heads and trying to gauge each other, understand each other um, and trying to see how this is going to go. Um, but the moment we sat down and the table read actually started and we started hearing these other characters come to life, that's when we kind of realized, oh, the chemistry is good. And, yeah. you know, the whole room realized that everybody was like, oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that was probably the moment. But it keeps, you know, it keeps getting stronger and stronger every now. The, the vibe on set is so fantastic that every day, genuinely, different things happen. We connect in different ways. We understand each other better. You know, we can help each other out and life happens and we know about each other's lives and the things that are going on in there too. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and we are quite a co uh, collaborative, good group here. Yeah. It comes off on screen as well. You know, there've been so many incredible cameos this season. How early on do you learn who will be making a guest appearance and who's been the most talking guest thus far? The most shocking was definitely uh, Neil Patrick Harris. That was yeah. freaking fun. <laughs> um, everybody was so stoked for that. 
Um, and it turned out great. And he, you know, uh, is like a immensely, he's a larger than life dude. And it's just great to be in the presence. Um, but we find out uh, when we read it, <laughs> like a day or two, if, if that, you know, sometimes we don't even know until on the day and then we oh, wow. uh, new sides come up it's amazing it's really it, it is as surprising and exciting for us as it is for anybody else so you know <laughs> you keep getting surprised there are lots of amazing ones yeah yeah it keeps you on your toes if you could pitch a guest to the writers who would you love to see on the show and why um well re more recently i've been thinking cal penn um mm. just because you know, I think he's an amazing person and um, just a legend. So that would be great. I'd, I'd be super stoked. You know, this industry has made really slow progress in terms of representation. And early on, there was this element of tokenism in the conversation of diversity. But with shows like How I Met Your Father, we're seeing a much needed step forward in that evolution where we can have characters with diverse backgrounds exist in the world without their sole identity being attached to their ethnicity and or their culture. When did you start noticing that shift in the industry? And what has it meant to you to be a part of this movement? It means everything. Um, you know, that is my movement our movement you know that's what we're doing that's that's the real work um uh of course things have gotten better and as in as far as the conversation about tokenism is concerned as much as it can be frustrating or can be a tool um uh it's it's needed it's great that you said the word evolution because it is an evolution it, yeah without that stage this stage where we are mm. now where you know these characters are being uh, evolved more, understood more, written better, and like explored more honestly and true to its, you know, uh, whatever group's reality. Um, uh, this is like another step without, with, and without the tokenism, this wouldn't have come through. So I think we're in the process, we're moving along, but things are beautiful, things are super exciting. And especially since, you know, diversity is most important where the idea is formed. And when the idea is cultivated and we're seeing more and more uh, diversity in that realm, which in turn like translates into what I'm doing or what I can do or, uh, you know, the things I'm allowed to explore, really. Um, so uh, we've come a long way, but there's a long way to go. Yeah, beautifully said. And we know you can't say too much, but what can you tease about what's ahead for Sid in the back half of season two? It will surprise you <laughs> most definitively i was super surprised i was very excited for the back half of this season so 10 on um even you know when we were reading the scripts and we were going through it by episode 10 we had all reached this kind of like mode and we were moving through things so smoothly and everything was we just kept getting better and better and around 10 uh, towards till the end of it we really became like really smooth. Um, so I'm super excited to see this um, because I was always saying uh, from the get, wait till wait till 10, wait till 10, 11, 12. These episodes, they start like leveling up. So I'm super stoked. Um, and you will most definitively be confounded by what is happening in Sid's life. 100% I was as well. <laughs> That. And, you know, this show is able to tackle so many universal themes told through a comedic lens. Why do you think this genre lends itself to this type of storytelling? And was there a particular theme that hit home for you? Well, comedy is humanity's way to talk about things that are either tough uh, uh, or uh, uh, that you feel frustrated by or stuck in. You know, this is a story about a bunch of, uh, you know, late 20, early 30 somethings that are trying to figure out life. And if any yeah. anybody who's been in that period of your life, as much as it is fun, it is also frustrating, you know. So to talk about, you know, all of the things that happen in life, the best mode, in my opinion, is comedy because it brings light to everything. It makes you enjoy things that you wouldn't even normally enjoy, uh, you know, in retrospect. So I think it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, in the world we live in, there's no you know, there's a there's no like limit to how much comedy we need. So it's beautiful. Great answer. I got one final question for you. If we're lucky enough to get a third season, is there an aspect of Sid that you would love to dive further into? Yeah, I I, I most definitively I want Sid to be put uh outside of his space of comfort. 
I want mm. something to happen that puts him in a situation where he, you know, Sid's very secure, kind of. Like, as yeah. in who he is, he's very secure. And I want, or it would be very interesting to see him be placed outside of that and see what happens. What will he do? You know, how will he reconfigure himself, understand himself and evolve? So I'm really hoping, like everybody else, for season three. And I hope it happens. And if it does, this would be such a fun thing to explore. Mm -hmm.